Hello everyone, thank you for watching this presentation in which I will tell you something about a study we conducted in which we analyzed death in popular movies and the relation between death and the narrative structure of popular movies. For many people, uh, death is their biggest fear and that is why people generally tend to avoid thinking about death. But somewhat paradoxically, uh, the movies they watch, as well as the series they watch and the stories they read, often do confront them with death. And in fact, death is a central topic in many movies. When watching a movie, viewers are on average confronted with a death-related scene every seven to eight minutes. And that is why some researchers have argued that movies may contribute to unhealthy death attitudes and that they may increase viewers' fear of death, also because death in movies uh, is supposed, supposedly often related to violence. But more recent experimental studies have shown that movies also have the potential to decrease viewers' fear of death and that they may in fact help viewers to uh, overcome this fear. And these findings can be explained by the idea that narratives function as a flight si simulator. While watching or reading a story, people mentally simulate the social scenarios that play a role in it. And they can do so in a what is called a risk-free environment. It is a safe fictional space in which they simulate the experiences of the characters. And through this simulation, they can practice, for example, their social skills. In a specific context of death, we can assume that viewers simulate events and experiences that are related to death. But we don't know yet what exactly viewers uh, simulate when they watch movies in which one of the characters dies. And we also don't know what viewers might learn about death and what they might learn about the meaning of death from watching movies. So in this study, um, we did not only want to analyze if and how characters die, but also why they die by focusing on the role and meaning of death in the narrative structure of movies and how their death is depicted. And the aim was to answer the questions, what do viewers simulate when watching death scenes? So how is death depicted? What do they simulate? But also what do they learn about the meaning of death? And in this study, we focused specifically on the role of death in the narrative structure of movies because um, it has been, this has been related to the meaning of death. So Hagen developed this framework about the meaning of death and the narrative structure of movies. And he distinguished between three types of death. So there are story initial death in which a person, a character dies in the beginning of the story and such deaths are meaningful in relation to the future, which means that they can alter the goals of a character or set up new goals for a character or put a character in a new social position, for example. Story terminating death uh, is a death that occurs at the end of the story and these are said to be meaningful in relation to the past. For example, because they reveal the truth about that past or that they make an end to evil or to evil actions of evil persons. And then finally, story intermediate death is a death that is meaningful in relation to the past as well as the future. So what we did was we used the IMDb database to assemble a set of 60 popular movies released between 2012 and 2021. We chose drama and action movies because these are both among the most successful movie genres and because death events uh, occur in both genres. But there are also uh, differences between the genres. 
So drama movies are typically eudaimonic, which uh, is a form of meaningful and moving entertainment. Uh, but action movies are typically not. That means that comparing drama movies with action movies could reveal if there are genre differences in how death is portrayed, and also if drama movies ascribe more or different meanings to death than action movies. We had a wide range of movies. As you can see, there are some examples on this slide. And the first step of the analysis in this step, we uh, identified the main death related events. So in many movies, uh, there are more death events, uh, but first we identified which of these events is the most important for the story. So once we agreed upon this, um, we continued with step two. So we analyzed this specific death related event on a number of variables. Um, so, first of all, we uh, analyze it in terms of the role of this event in the narrative structure. And um, we both analyze it in relation to the underlying chronological structure of the story, as well as the surface structure um, of the movie, which did not have to be uh, chronological, for example, in case there were flashbacks or flash forwards and so on. We also analyzed the type of death event. So did the character die from an attack or an accident, or was it a medical event and so on? Uh, we analyzed the role of the dead character, uh, which could be the main character, a loved one, an enemy or someone else. And then we also analyzed if uh, the character's death was portrayed explicitly or not. There were two coders involved in the analysis and the intercoder reliability for all of these variables was good. <clears throat> and the quantitative analysis was then supplemented with an additional qualitative thematic analysis uh, in which we tried to uh, identify central themes to which death was uh, linked in each of the movies. Looking at the results, um, we found that in 95% of all movies, at least one of the characters died. And there was a difference between action movies and drama movies, as you might have expected. So, in almost 87% of the action movies, more than 10 people died, but this was the case for only 23% uh, of the drama movies. And we also found that death was explicitly shown in 64.6% .6 of all movies, and this did not differ between uh, drama movies and action movies. So here in this figure, you see if death was related, um, if death occurred, yeah, it's, it's the role of death in uh, the underlying chronological narrative structure of movies. And as you can see, um, death related events are found to function mostly as a story's ending rather than a story's beginning or a story's middle. And there was no difference drama movies and action movies. So as I mentioned, we also analyzed the role of death in the surface structure of movies. And for the surface structure, we found a similar pattern. So death related events can be shown at the end of a movie rather than at the beginning of a movie or in the middle of a movie. And again, there was no difference between drama movies and action movies. So moving on to the type of death event, uh, this table shows that most death related events were attacks, followed by conversations about death and threats or risks. Notably, as you can see, there were no death related events involving funerals or afterlife. And 
And we also see that medical death and accidents and natural death, um, but also self-harm events were quite rare. And the latter three only occurred in drama movies. This is notable because these are actually the most frequent types of death in real life. People tend to die from accidents or medical issues rather than violent attacks. But this is not something that we, and we see often when we watch a character dying in a movie. We found two differences between drama and action movies. Um, attacks were more frequent in action movies, while self-harm events were more frequent in drama movies. Um, even though, as you can see, they're also not that common in drama movies either. If we look at the character that dies or almost dies or is involved in the death in the main death related event, we see that in most cases it was either the main character or the loved one of a main character who passed away. And this was uh, almost identical for well, act, drama movies and action movies, at least there were no differences. And this means that when people watch a movie and simulate death while watching a movie, they tend to simulate, if we assume that they identify with the main character, either uh, their own death, if the main character dies, or the death of a loved one, if the loved one of the main character dies. The qualitative analysis revealed several Several movies um, relate death to a feeling of growth, and this is specifically the case for movies in which based on original death. These movies show that death becomes meaningful through its impact on the lives of others, for example, by stimulating or even forcing them to grow. Some of these movies. and show that death avoidance is essentially successful. They show that death is used what you face in order to move forward. In this way, these movies relate death to the issue of growth as well. Overcoming death avoidance in interviews results ultimately in personal growth. Story intermediate death events were least common in the movie set. A theme found across these movies is that death unites people. For example, through personal conversations about death, about losing a loved one, for example. Several movies with a th story terminating death can be seen as prototypical examples of death that puts an end to evil. For example, um, when uh, an evil person dies, um, after being chased after the entire movie. But we also, we did not only uh, see this in action movies, but also in drama movies. And in these movies, we can see uh, a theme of salvation emerging. A second theme that emerged from the analysis of story terminating death was that of separation when death marks an ending between friendships or relationships. And although death results in separation in these movies, it can still be seen as meaningful in the sense that it underscores the value of interpersonal relationships. So what viewers learn from these movies is that death, yes, is indeed um, awful and it separates people, but it also shows um, why interpersonal relationships are so important. So, as I said, if we assume that when people simulate uh, the events of a movie, and if we assume that they identify with the main character of a movie, uh, we can conclude that viewers are typically confronted with their own mortality, the main character dies, 
but also with the mortality of their loved ones if a main character's loved one dies. And this means that movies might help us to uh, learn something about what it means to die and what it means to lose someone. The results also point towards uh, mixed realism in the sense that death is more often than not explicitly portrayed, which is somewhat realistically, um, but violent deaths uh, tend to be overrepresented. And this, of course, is an unrealistic uh, view of reality, because in reality, um, violent attacks and people dying from violence um, is rather an exception. We found that uh, death is typically depicted as meaningful in relation to the past rather than the future, um, which means that it retrospectively adds meaning to the lives and journeys of people. And although death is a separation, movies show that it can also lead to personal growth, that it can unite people, and that it can bring salvation. So we did not find any differences between drama and action movies. Well, some uh, small differences, but not um, differences, for example, in the way uh, in the role of death in the narrative structure. Um, so this um, raises the question if the depiction and also the meaning of death uh, in movies is genre independent. And this is something that future research might uh, look into further. Um, our results showed a strong association between death and violence. And a previous study by Schultz and Wett um, more than 20 years ago, uh, reported uh, similar findings, um, and they analyzed movies released between 1980 and 1994. Um, so this seems to point towards a persistent tendency among movie makers to associate death with violence. And we know from decades of research on cultivation theory um, that the overrepresentation of violence in the media is positively correlated with fear and with perceived danger in viewers. So this rather uniform and violent movie way of death um, might reinforce rather than reduce people's fear of death. And indeed, if we look at the studies which showed um, positive effects of movies on viewers fear of death, uh, we see that these studies used similar materials in which characters died in more realistic uh, context and specifically medical context. So this could mean that the positive effects of movies on fewer potential fears and the fear of death might be limited to a specific relatively small group of movies. But this is also something that future research um, could test. These are the references and thank you again for watching this presentation.